Burlington Magazine, volume 119, November 1977, page 802. Figure 183, Woman in Bomb Glass, 1974, 1, by Effie McWilliam. Patinated bronze, 56.5, by 139.2 by 57 centimetres. The second of three casts and the last and largest sculpture from the series Women of Belfast. Exhibited Waddington Galleries, London, November 1976. It's very bizarre to sit drawing a bronze sculpture of a newspaper in flight. There's an odd, pointless circularity about it. But I need to look at this piece for long enough to see all of Matt's marks. Every piece of pressed clay and plaster, every plane and surface. You look at it and think of the things he thought of. Where does this line go? What does this shape do next to that one? You look at how generously he's used curves in the work, how he contrives to make it so graceful and feminine. She's just another abstract figurative problem. She's an odalisk, a beautiful thing. She's a little formal game. Did the bomb blast come first? Or the sculptural challenge? I've been drawing this for 15 years, and every time I draw it, I draw it wrong in the same way. Certain lines are harder to draw than others. The curve of the heels on both feet seems implausible. And where does it go to? The lines end up looking wrong however you render them, but there is a grace and almost balletic spirit in the way that some of the figures fall. They're arabesques stressed by the flowing drapery of the dresses blown against the resisting frame. Drapery is usually a way of revealing the form that it conceals, but here it destroys it. Arms and legs stick out from this crumpled mass, this load of bones and folds almost at random. The way her silky garments undulate, it seems she's dancing as she walks along like serpents that the sacred charmers make to move in rhythms of their waving wands. McWilliam suggests a movement of implication, of posture and gesture, and a bubble of drapery, realistically flying out Oppressed in harsh folds that evoke those in certain paintings of El Greco against the crumpled forms of the victims. The fluidity of the drapery and the Medardo Rosso like blurring of the features was obtained by a use of wet, almost dripping plaster of Paris built up on wire armatures. The resulting bronzes were not only tour de force, since the sculptor was working against the nature of an essentially static expressive form, but in most cases, brilliantly successful. Earth, bronze, fire, clay, plaster, wax, mouldable like putty, retaining impressions like a lump of plastic explosive. It's the first material. Lost wax, the figure is burned, vaporized, by the molten metal that's poured into the mould. What evil there is in beauty, and what beauty in evil. I think that if you can understand this piece, you can understand a lot about the rest of this show, and about the obsessions and appetites that still dominate Northern Ireland.